You must have had something going on because you sent out the pre-show email early. I thought maybe you had like... I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. You must have had something going on. I'm so freaking exhausted right now with everything going on. I'm like... You've had a lot going on. If I leave this... Well, it started with that whole take a plane trip down to Orange County and drive back so my son's car could be here thing last week. I haven't recovered yet. I'm so tired that I'm like, if if I save all this... You don't know how many times I'm typing out that show email and my head is hitting the laptop... Because I'm falling asleep. Usually like 10 p.m. I'm it's like, pretty we're late. doing this at 5. Good. We're doing it at 5. And uh, and then if something happens in the Warrior game, we'll add that in. We can talk about that in the morning. And and to a degree, it did. Because they went out and lost to a G League team. Yeah. They You're like the Warriors out. right now. You're down 25. You're just trying brother, to recover. Brother. You're trying to rally. It's called parenthood. But uh, here, here's the thing why this comeback, this mini comeback, if you will, it bugged me last night. Because, A, it sucked me in. In fact, even young Jude. Young Jude got an extra 45 minutes of awake time last night. Why? Because we were going to go to bed and night-night, and, and, and the Warriors are down by 30. And then here, oh, wait, Steph's hitting threes. Wait a minute. Dad, now it's, they're down by 10. Dad, they're down by 6. I want to stay up and watch. And how does a host at 95-7 right. the game look at his kid and be like, No! You get into bed. Tim Roy even said it. It's a two-possession game. It's a two-possession game, and every time it is, it always rings in my head. Years ago, I'm at a press conference with Alvin Gentry, then the head coach of the Los Angeles Thank Clippers. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And just a post-game conference, and he said something. He goes, a six-point lead in the NBA might as well be zero. It's nothing. He goes, that can be erased in 11 seconds. So as soon as the Warriors got it to six, I'm like, okay, we got ourselves a basketball game. So, A, you sucked me in. B, you stole 45 minutes of sleep from an eight-year-old. That's just wrong. And C, you showed the way you should have been playing the entire time. The reason they rallied wasn't because they started hitting every three. They actually weren't even that great on the offensive end. But they rallied because they played intensely on both ends of the floor, which meant they could athletically overwhelm a bunch of G League players, a bunch of bench players. And you saw it. Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins were making steals, and they were diving on the floor, and and, and guys were getting open looks, and damn it, that step three, if it had gone in, and that Iguodala call that got reviewed and all that, who knows where this would have gone. But the point is, is sometimes it bothers me when I see that because it's like, why can't you bring that in the first quarter? Why can't you bring it in the third quarter? so that you don't fall down by 30. And I get it. They're veterans, and they've learned how to sort of, you know, run all of their energy and dilute it a little bit so that they don't run out by the end of the year. But at the same time, it's like, come on, man. You've lost two in a row. This is the Steph return night. You're at home against the G League. Don't, stop sleepwalking. And, and why do you wait three and a half quarters to shake yourself? And wake up. It's the Star Wars night, too. And this is akin <sighs> to Luke Skywalker not hitting that shot on his second pass into the Death Star. <laughs> turns out he, yeah. Damn it. A little, came in a little hot. It turns out you, you rattled that one out, in and out <laughs> heartbreak. And next thing you know, that big uh, destroyer beam lights up the planet and ball game. Uh, Empire wins. And that's basically what this was. Luke Skywalker, it was a nice try in your comeback, but you fell just short. And You were the you know, chosen one. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you look at last night and just the way that game was going, it's like, oh, okay, you know, Warriors are up early. Yeah, that's how this is supposed to go. And then they're down five. They're down eight. They're down 11. They're down 15. They're down 19, 23. They're down 30. Wait, what? It was it eight and... Chris Paul? I find your lack of effort disturbing. And that's, you you talk about things that bug you, and this is a a, a very small bug in terms of things that bug me. When Steve Kerr comes out and says, this is on me, I didn't have them ready to play. Come on, Steve. What does that mean? I didn't have them ready to play. I mean, you look at that's Steph a, Curry that's and be a like, bunch of bulls right, does he have to is. go locker to locker before right. games in January? Okay, we, 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 we go. We, we, come on. What do you, what do you need, Capri Suns at halftime? Exactly. That, and I know what he's doing. Of he's course. trying to take the blame away from the players, but the players are the ones who need to be blamed for that mess. He also said that maybe the, like this is good for them. This is going to be the wake-up call because it was embarrassing. I don't know. 
I don't know. Did you when you looked at the Warriors last night after the game? Did they look embarrassed? I, I really don't know, and I'm not. I'm not saying that they didn't. I I don't know. I don't know how they felt about that. But I know that the Suns have now beaten them all three times this year. I know that Orlando swept them. I know that Detroit swept them. And I know the context and that for each and every one of those statements, there are reasons, although not the Suns. There was no reason. That's why it was good. the Detroit thing. All right, you hit a buzzer beater, right? And then the Orlando, oh, everyone keeps telling me that Ben Carroll is just the next damn big thing, and you just can't do anything with his best shot. And then, of course, they were they were very limited. They were injured. They did not have all of their players for those games, Steph, Clay, and, and beyond. But last night, what are you going to give me? Steph needs his ramp-up game? Name a son who played last night. I'll give you Mikhail Bridges. Anybody There's that else, Washington guy you couldn't guard. Anybody else listening, name a son, and you're going to tell me, yeah, but, you Damian know. Lee, you shouldn't have given Damian Lee his damn ring. Huh. He was feeling himself yeah, he was. with Seidel and his young son yeah, in the building. The Curry family shots were the only good thing about that game last night. Right. Had, right? They're like, look. Here's Steph's mom, and here's Sedell, and then they're like, and look, there's Aisha. She's over there. They're rooting for opposite teams, and that baby's cute. He's got cheeks and all yeah, that. Great. The whole deal. Great. That was fun. Uh, but outside of that, what do you – come on. Come on. There's no reason to lose this basketball game last night. So, are you hitting me with a what are you doing right now, Warriors? I mean, the whole game was a big old what are you doing. Seriously. The whole game. And it's uh, – Willard and Dibs want to know, hey, Warriors, <laughs> what are you doing 20 and 21 because – you know, hey, you won the first five games in your homestand. They're back. They've turned the corner. The Warriors, yeah, championship or bust. And then you lose those three games in this fashion. And, you know, it's why I, I feel pretty confident in where I've been throughout this entire season, which is well, this is not last year. This is a totally different deal. Well, of course it is. We, we know that. I just don't know that it's not going to end the exact same way. 